Hello and welcome to the Microphotonics Imaging Laboratory here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We're happy to have you with us today. Each month we're going to be going through some new tips and tricks videos to help you get the most out of your Skyscan Micro CT instrument. Let's go ahead and jump into this month's tip. Hello and welcome to this month's installment of the Microphotonics Tip of the Month series. Today we're going to be talking specifically about the conditional mean filter within CT Analyzer version 1.20.8. So why don't we go ahead and uh, give a little background information about image filtering. So pretty much we use image filtering to clean up any noise or specular data in our CT results. This can arise from either low frame averaging or from large step sizes or just from samples with limited transmission. To go ahead and start working on testing out the filters, we're going to move to the custom processing tab and we can check out our filtering plugin because typically we'd be applying a filter prior to um, doing any other actions within our task list. So if we double click on filtering, we can look and navigate to the conditional mean filter. As always, we can choose between a square or a round kernel, which will be the way we pick the pixels around our central pixel to be filtered. We can apply the filter in either 2D or 3D space for something that's very computationally intense, like the conditional mean. 2D space will be a lot more efficient than uh, 3D space. Uh, because there is a lot of computations going in the background. So the conditional mean filter is pretty interesting. It is a mean filter, kind of like what we've already discussed here, the mean filter. But we add in this new parameter called the threshold. And so the threshold allows us to get rid of outlying pixels around our pixel to be filtered. And so this helps us to throw away data like at this interface between this really bright pixel and these more uh, dense pixels or less dense pixels where they show up dimmer here. Um, we can kind of get rid of these bright pixels when we're trying to figure out the average value that we should use for this region. And so typically for most data sets, we recommend a threshold of between 10 and 20. The nice benefit of CTN version 1.20 is it allows you to preview these kind of uh, setting changes before applying them to the entire data set, which can save you a lot of time compared to past versions where you had to apply the filter through the entire data set, I'll wait for it to calculate, and then go back and examine the results. And if you didn't like it, you had to reload the data set and start over. Now we have the ability to quickly preview on slice by slice basis for 2D filtering. So why don't we go ahead and set a radius of two, keep our threshold of 10, and click preview. And we're going to see that while we don't see a big change, we do see a little bit of improvement. If we go up to something like a radius of four, click preview again, we're getting a little bit finer smoothing inside the uh, inside the sand particles here. So if I back out, go to no filter, apply the filter, you can see that we're getting some smoothing going on there. If we go up to a limit of what we can get here in terms of our threshold of 10. But the nice thing about the conditional mean filter is that we're doing a really great job of preserving the edges, but we're also not losing these fine details like inside this um, dense region. We're not losing these lower density spots that we would normally lose in a mean filter. Now if I go ahead and increase my threshold to 20, click preview, we see that we get even better smoothing of our um, particle noise but we are still are doing a pretty good job of keeping all of our fine details. And so that's really the key benefit of the conditional mean filter. It's going to be more uh, computationally intense than the standard mean filter, uh, but it does a great job of preserving edges like the Kuwahara filter, but without losing so much fine detail as we can see here as we cycle between the settings. So I hope this uh, video was useful for you in determining if the conditional mean might be the right filter for your data set. And we look forward to you tuning in to future installments of the Microphotonics Tip of the Month series. Hello. Thank you for watching this installment of our video tip of the month. At Microphotonics, we strongly believe that the research you do changes the world and we're happy to support you in your efforts through these videos, through our advanced training courses, and our annual workshops. Through these efforts, we strive to make sure that you are getting the most from your Bruker Micro CT machine. If you have any questions on this video or any other questions, feel free to give us a call or send us an email.
Thank you again and have a good day.